Thank you for joining me today. A couple years ago, we heard that stress and depression will be the number one disability. And little did we know that COVID-2019 will be playing an active role, raising alarms even on mental stats even more. The World Health Organization states that every 40 seconds, someone dies by suicide. One in five children and teenagers have a mental disorder. Depression is the number one leading cause for disability, affecting 264 million people globally. We are facing an international health crisis for which we had been forewarned about two decades ago about this imminent catastrophe. So let's take individual responsibility on curbing this alarming global catastrophe. What can we do as individuals to keep our mental health in check? We tend to wear our superhero capes, but how do we really feel inside? We pretend to show that we're strong outside, but how do we really feel inside? When we are struck with tragic news or when we hit rock bottom, how do we really feel? Is it still easy to wear that same superhero cape? Probably not. It is really hard to maintain a positive outlook during our downtime. So what can we do to strengthen our minds? Well, let's correlate it with our individual physical health. What do we do to maintain our bodies, our physical health? Step one, diet. A healthy diet would include a balanced diet. Depending on what your goal is, we are told that you should receive all the essential nutrients that are necessary for the body. We are told to avoid junk food, processed sugar, etc. Altogether, diet plays an active role in building our good health. Step two, exercise. Whether it's strength building, managing weight, or working on blood circulation, whatever fitness model you follow, it is always recommended that you have some kind of exercise routine. Step three, rest. Our exhausted bodies require rest and we require a sufficient amount of it. Sleep repairs and restores our organ systems, including our muscles, our immune system, and various other hormones. And if you have lack of that routine in your day-to-day -day lives, you're increasing your chances of collapsing. So in order to maintain a healthy body, the key three steps are diet, exercise, and sleep. Now, when we talk about health, we focus on spending our time, money, and effort on our physical health, on strengthening our bodies. But what about strengthening our minds? What about our mental well-being? We'll follow the three steps that we had followed in the physical health. So it's called the three M formula. The very first M is a meaningful diet. What are we continuously feeding our minds upon? What are we consuming through our minds constantly? Take a look around us. We observe things throughout the day. Our ears receive content. We interact with people throughout the day constantly we are processing so much information and now because of social distancing or isolation rules in effect even though we may not be interacting with people as much but we are still receiving information you might have heard of the three monkeys but the fourth one is said to have joined and this fourth one is the sum total of the first three he talks to nobody, he sees nobody, and he speaks to nobody. In fact, he could be even busier than everybody. So even though we may not be interacting with people around, we are still processing information throughout our brains. We need to filter the content that we allow our minds to absorb. We need to set those boundaries. As a detox would be helpful in resetting the body. We need to set a time for a digital detox. Unplug from our smart gadgets and break that chain of distraction. 
Researchers from the University of Pennsylvania recently published the first experimental research that states the link between social media use and decreased amount of mental well-being. The research states that limiting the use of social media also decreases symptoms of depression. So the key is to have a meaningful mental diet for strengthening our minds. The second M step is mindfulness. Our world is not only undergoing a physical deficit, but also an attention deficit. Everyone might have experienced that while reading, suddenly noticing that while his or her eyes have continued to move across the page, but one's mind, one's mind has been somewhere else. Our mind has a tendency to wander around and it is said that a wandering mind is quite often an unhappy mind. Our brain is continuously shaped from our day-to-day -day activities. Therefore, it is recommended to have a self-regulated attention stance that is called mindfulness. We need to be mindful of what is arising and passing through our minds. We need to be observant to it. We need to be vigilant. And also on the times when you are having a self-talk, what is your narrative? Is it a positive one or a negative one? Whether your mind likes to hike, bike, or jump to conclusions, be mindful of your personal dialogue. Exercise mindfulness on a day-to-day -day basis. The third and the last step that we will be talking about today is meditation. Meditation is a deep relaxation technique that has ample benefits. Neuroscience says that the wiring in our brain is not fixed, it is adaptable. Systematic practice of meditation can cure mental affliction and build clarity in life. It is during these moments that one can experience a deep state of mental rest. It helps us in decision making. It helps us bring focus into our life. Let us understand this further. Once there was a farmer who had discovered that he had lost his watch. That watch was not a smart watch that just happened to send its signals of location. It was an unsmart watch, but it was no ordinary watch. It was a rare watch that had been passed on to him through his family. It held sentimental value for him. The farmer searched for the watch in the farm for a while. And now the farmer was ready to give up. And so he called for the help of the group of children that were playing outside the barn. He promised them that the person who was able to find that watch will be rewarded. So the children hurried into the barn and started searching for that watch. They were searching around, but unfortunately, they were out of luck. They could not locate that missing watch. And just when the farmer was about to give up on searching for that watch, a little boy came up to him and asked him that he be given another chance. The farmer looked at that little boy and thought, why not? After all, the little boy seemed pretty sincere. And so the farmer directed him again towards the farm. The little boy went inside the farm again. After a while, he came out, but this time with a watch in his hand. The farmer was happy yet surprised and asked him how he succeeded where others had failed. The little boy said, I did nothing. I only sat on the ground and listened in that total silence. And in those moments of silence, I was able to hear the ticking of that watch. I followed that sound. The closer I got, the more clear was the sound. And so the boy was rewarded by that farmer. Now if we pay close attention, that boy was able to listen to that sound in moments of total silence. In the same way, in meditation, in those moments of silence, we are able to receive direction to what's missing and receive clarity in our lives and our thoughts. It is said that a peaceful mind can think better than a worked up mind. So nourish your mind as you would with your bodies. Divine Light World invites you 
to join us on this journey on which the very future of our world depends. While our service industry has successfully gained attention and sales by implementing the model of the happy hour, let us take individual responsibility by paying attention on building up our own mental happy peaceful place and experiencing that lasting happiness. And before I conclude, I'll leave you with this idea. The soul knows how to heal itself. The challenge is to silence the mind.